What's up, Cam Fam? Welcome back to my channel. Before anything else, this is gonna be a really, really important vlog, and I feel like it's gonna be so useful to a lot of you. But before I share all of these useful tips, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and click on that bell button so you're always notified whenever I have useful videos like this. So today's vlog is gonna be super duper, duper duper useful for all of you as people like me who are passionate about travel. I feel like a lot of these things you probably read somewhere else or maybe some of these tips that I'm about to give you are new but these are my personal travel tips for all of you out there. It's just some smart tips that I feel like will help you in a little or a big way. Especially when you're traveling long haul or especially when you're traveling to a new place and you're not really familiar or you are maybe traveling for the first time and you don't really have anyone to ask for tips or tamad ka na google for travel tips. So this is my top 12 travel tips. It was just supposed to be top 6 and then it became top 10 and now it's top 12. So I figured I really have to vlog about this or else the dami the dami lang yung tips ko and di time matatapos. So here goes. My travel tip number 1 which I feel like I've shared somewhere before already is to buy a local SIM. So whenever I travel, I do use local partners like Cherry Roam for my mobile data or for my internet usage. But sometimes if you don't have space for an item like that or you weren't able to prepare all of these things before you fly out, the next best thing for you is to buy a local SIM. I personally buy local SIMs a lot whenever I travel. So when I say local SIM, it's a SIM card that you buy at the country you're traveling in. So for example, if I'm in France, I'm buying a SIM card from France. They usually have these turn sims or they have packages for tourists that let's say offer unlimited data for like seven days and at like one half or one fourth of the price that you would normally get if let's say you're using your mobile networks roaming promo for example if you're using like a 599 or 499 or 699 promo the local sims are so 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 much more cheaper and so so much more reliable when you're traveling abroad and you need data and I feel like not a lot of people think that they need data but for for me, it's so much more convenient, especially when you're traveling around the country and you don't want to bring around a map. I mean, the last thing that you want to look like when you're traveling is a lost tourist. So at least when you're looking for a map on your phone, you don't attract that much attention. Especially when you're traveling to a foreign country, bad people are really targeting tourists. So when you're like, hey, I'm a tourist here with my big map, then you can really attract the wrong kind of attention. So at least when you have mobile data, you can easily look for all these types of information that you need as a tourist very, very easily. Tip number two, don't put all your money in one place. I mean, as much as we want to travel cashless and just use our credit card, not a lot of countries and not all establishments accept credit cards. So you still do have to have like some amount of cash with you. And if you're the type who goes old school and still prefers bringing cash over using your credit card, then you probably have a lot of cash with you. I think it's always the safest when you have cash in different places so that if knock on wood, something bad happens to you or your bag gets stolen, your wallet gets stolen, you still have cash somewhere else. I mean, for example, if your wallet gets stolen and then you don't have your debit card, you don't have an ATM card, you can't withdraw and you need cash cash like of course, you would still need cash. At least you have emergency cash stashed away somewhere else. So for me personally, especially when I travel to Europe, I bring more cash than I would normally when I travel around Asia. So what I would do is keep some in my wallet, keep some in my bag, give some to Yoni or to whoever I'm traveling with. Some I would keep in my safe back in my hotel room. Some I would keep in a secret compartment somewhere in my luggage. So I really try to keep my money in different places. Now, if you're scared that you might forget where where you placed all your money then it would also help if you well a tell someone where you kept it like for example with your name like hey remind me i placed money here or the easiest way is just to put it on your phone like okay these are the places that i kept my money in i mean you don't have to put like a title so people who steal your phone won't know where you put your money just put like random names there you yourself would be able to understand where you put your money tip number three bring a medicine kit 
Now this one I got from my mom. Shout out to Catalina Ko. And I feel like a lot of our moms used to do this and I'm sure it probably irked you or as a kid you'd always be like, Mom, I don't need it. I'm not gonna get sick. But you really never know when you need it. Like, it's an emergency. I mean, these things are not planned. You don't plan on getting sick when you're traveling but it does happen. And it's so much easier for you to just have medicine with you than to go out to a pharmacy, to a foreign country, to a place where there's a chance they probably wouldn't understand what you're talking about. Especially when it comes to medicine, you don't want it to get lost in translation. Of course, yeah, generic names are more or less the same. But still, when you travel abroad, you're not familiar with the kind of medicine that they have there. Especially if you're also someone who's sensitive to certain ingredients, you don't know what's inside it. So it's always, always safer to just travel with your own medicine kit so you know what you're putting inside your body and you don't have to panic when emergency strikes. I personally travel with a recyclable Ziploc and I put all my medicine there. I even have antibiotics there for colds, for fever, for diarrhea, for dehydration, for sore throat, for everything. Honestly, I have been trained well by my Chinese mother, Catalina. She will be proud. Tip number four, transfer all your toiletries to smaller bottles and containers. I cannot stress enough, I keep telling my friends this, especially Lisa Kahayun, who refuses to travel with small containers. But it saves you so much more space and baggage allowance. It's just not practical to bring an entire bottle of shampoo or conditioner or whatever it is to like a three-day trip or a four-day trip or even a week's trip, you know? You just transfer to smaller bottles, it's so much better, it's so much more convenient and it makes your life easier and at least you know, in the off chance that it explodes and spills all over your bag, it doesn't damage so much stuff because you only have like a small bottle. And also, at least next time that you travel, you already have your kit there. You don't have to like keep getting everything because it's already all in that small bottle and in your travel kit. In your Everything's already in your travel kit. So you just get it. Tip number five. Bring an extra foldable duffel. This is so 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 convenient especially when you're traveling abroad and you don't know if you're gonna buy a lot of stuff. If you're a shopaholic like other people, not me. <laughs> it's nice to have an extra duffel just to let's say bring around or if you're gonna come home and you'll have an extra bag. At least you don't have to buy an extra luggage to fit all of your stuff in. You already have an extra duffel with you. Like for us, when we travel let's say long haul and we're traveling business class, sometimes I just bring one bag each even if I'm allowed to bring two. And then I just bring the extra duffel and then if it just so happens that it doesn't fit my big bag anymore because I shopped, then at least I still have that duffel and I have an extra padlock with it. So I could also check that in and I'm good to go. It also came in really really handy when Yanni and I went outlet shopping in France and we had to take a train so that we don't attract so much attention. We just put all our stuff in that big duffel bag. So it's also really handy for that. Tip number six, bring a set of clothes in your hand carry. So it has happened to me, it has happened to my family, it has happened to Yoni during our flight to our own wedding. Luggages get lost, they get delayed, and it really, really, really comes in handy if you have a new set of underwear, a new set of clothes with you in your hand carry because your hand carry will not get lost. It travels with you and you're taking care of that and not someone else. No airline is gonna lose that for you. I remember before when I went to France for my student exchange program, my mom and my brother actually had their luggage lost, delayed. Back in 2007, practically nothing was open around Paris. Like, it was a Saturday and a Sunday. So, so many shops were closed. My mom couldn't buy anything. So, she was just wearing the same set of clothes for two days straight. After that, every time we travel long haul or even like short haul flights, we always have a set of clothes with us in our hand carry to prevent that from happening ever again. Tip number seven. Before starting your trip, make sure to research the best airport transport. Now, sad to say, most of the transpo scams usually happen at the airport. And I usually count myself as a smart traveler, but I remember I was actually already victimized by one of the scams when I traveled to New York and I was just so, so tired and wanted to get it over with. And I was just like, yeah, I'll just ride with you. And I ended up being scammed. He stole money from me. Long story short, he pretended that I only gave him this amount of money when in fact, I really gave him the right amount of money. So he got like almost double of what I'm supposed to pay for because he quickly did a switcheroo of the cash that I gave him, which is one of the most known like scams when it comes to 
taxis and stuff. Before flying in, make sure to check what's the best kind of airport transportation, how much you're supposed to be paying, what are the scams that you should look out for, because even the smartest travelers do end up being duped or scammed. You have your weak moments, so at least when you're traveling and you have all these information, then you're much, much more confident and you would lessen the chances of being scammed. Tip number eight, bring an eco bag. Aside from being more sustainable and saving the environment, also a lot of foreign countries and even here in the Philippines are already starting to encourage consumers to bring their own eco bags more so that we have less waste. So aside from not having any waste, you also don't have to pay for an additional fee for getting bags from the stores because a lot of the stores actually, especially abroad, do charge for the plastics or the bags that you get from them. Also, it helps you lessen the things that you carry with you. If you have an eco bag, at least you could just keep putting all your purchases and everything else inside the eco bag and you don't have to carry all these like small bags or all these different bags with you. Tip number nine, don't bring your passport out with you. Now, I know that a lot of stores actually require you to show them your real passport when you're, let's say, getting a tax refund from certain countries. But a lot of the other countries also don't require this, so make sure you do your research. If they don't require this, don't bring your passport with you wherever you go. Just leave it at the safe in your hotel or lock it up in your hand carry or something because at least when you lose your bag or someone steals your bag when you're walking in like checking out sites and shopping and eating you don't lose your passport because it's so much more difficult when you lose your passport it really ruins your trip you have to go to the embassy you have to do a lot of different things so for me i never travel with my passport i don't bring my passport out with me i feel so much more safer and i feel less anxious when i don't have my passport in my body i just bring an electronic copy of my passport saved on my phone it's also saved on my email or some other cloud so that if i lose my phone i can also access the electronic electronic copy somewhere else in the cloud. Tip number 10, if you're flying long haul, bring slippers. I know this sounds so much like a diva tip, but it helps, guys. It really helps, especially when it's late at night and you really just want to go pee. You don't want to be wearing your shoes again and like tying up your shoelaces or like wearing your boots because you're traveling somewhere wintry. If you have one of those like free hotel slippers with you, they're so thin, so easy to bring with you. Just put them there so that every time you go to the loo or you... Loo? British? Every time you go to the toilet or you need to stand up for your seat, you don't have to shuffle around with your shoes. You already have slippers and also it makes it so much more comfortable tip number 11 this tip actually came from yanni don't ever ever change your money at the airport because airport foreign exchange rates are almost always so 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 much higher than it would be in the city or even in the hotels actually hotels and airports usually are more expensive if you need money right away then maybe change before you fly out if you can't change a lot here in the philippines or wherever you're coming from change a little bit and then just to survive like a day with that little money and then and afterwards you can exchange your money somewhere in the city and then finally for my last tip read 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 reviews read reviews about tourist sites read reviews about restaurants read reviews about the hotels you're booking read reviews about transportations read reviews about the areas you're going to what areas are you supposed to watch out for what areas are you supposed to be more careful at what restaurants are good what restaurants are bad what are the things that happen in a certain hotel what should you expect in a hotel reviews are king like reviews really help so so much for me especially whatever I do when I'm traveling like whether it's booking a hotel or booking a transportation service or booking a tour I always 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 read all the reviews because most often than not they're always 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 good and they always help and they're always really reliable now I've already touched on transportation. Let's say you get in trouble, you're already in that country, especially when it comes to transportation. Let's say you're in a taxi and the taxi tries to trick you and you're already there and he's trying to trick you to pay more than what and you're already there and he's trying to trick you to pay more than what you're supposed to, always ask help from your hotel receptionist. Go to your hotel and tell them what's happening and the hotel for sure will help you sort it out. Reviews and some, just a quick smart tip there that Yoni always gives to his friends, like always ask help from the hotel concierge or receptionist. So that's it for my travel tips. I hope that you found all of them or at least some of them useful. If you have any more travel tips, then please make sure to leave them in the comment section below so that you can also help out our fellow travelers out there and make sure to give me a thumbs up so i'll get more inspired to make more videos for you guys but yeah so see you guys on my next vlog bye